it is amazing to see such a huge turnout for a similar cause. My name is Millie Fontana. I'm 23 years old and I am a donor conceived child of lesbian parents. I stand here with support from all three of my parents. This is a testimony that is <laughs> safe to say unheard of because nobody wants to hear about the other side of the rainbow, the side that is not catered for, that don't grow up happy and grow up with a dissenting idea of what a family structure should be. Growing up, I wanted a father. I felt it within me that I was missing a father before I could even articulate what a father was. I knew that I loved both of my parents, but I could not place my finger on what it is I was missing inside myself. When I hit school, I started to realise through observing other children and their loving bonds with their fathers that I really was missing out on something very special. I was lied to throughout school. I was told I didn't have a father or that perhaps they didn't know who he was. It was very difficult for me to affirm a stable identity because of this. And my behavioral and emotional stability suffered greatly because of it. I stand here before you raised atheist with no religious affiliations. I stand with Christians because so far in this debate, Christians are the only people trying to reflect the issues that follow with children. Christians so far are the only people trying to shine light on stories like mine. Nobody in the LGBT lobby wants to hear from someone like me because so far, love is love, right? We don't exist. <laughs> Growing up, I would look in the mirror and I would think to myself, where did I get these green eyes? Where did I get these aspects of my personality, these talents that neither of my parents in the home had? The answer to that is quite simply my father. But in reality, it's not just the father or the donor, as they like to call it. It turns out I have an uncle, I have an auntie, and I have a grandmother, along with many loving cousins. When they chose what parts of my identity were acceptable to reveal to me, they took something from me. And where other children were able to look in the mirror and reconcile those missing parts and say, I love my mothers or my fathers, I could not. Because in my eyes, who were my parents to decide what parts of me were acceptable to reveal to me? <sighs> Meeting my father at 11 years old was probably <laughs> the only time I had been a stable child. I saw for the very first time who I was. I looked into his eyes and I thought, that is the missing part of me. Not because I'd fantasized about having a father, but because I could put a face to who I was. So I could look at somebody who was equally responsible for my existence. I could affirm my identity based on this man. And if I had not met my father, I would be, I would not be standing here with you today because my emotional reaction to not having him in my life, even at such a young age, was devastating and it caused me to regress in my development. I want to talk about real equality. There's a lot of talk about equality from the LGBT lobby, but I sort of wonder what their definition of equality is because for me, equality was being told the truth, was being respected for who I was as a whole 
and not just based on what my parents desired to let me know. Equality was being able to look at both sides of my genetic family and understanding who I was. Equality is not saying that because volunteer studies of gay families and children of gays that come out with a positive outcome define it for everybody. It's completely unrealistic. I heard this lie from the LGBT back in March saying that children don't care who their family is and that men and women are interchangeable. I consider this in itself to be a form of gender discrimination. Men and women offer complementary roles in child rearing and should probably be respected equally. It's, it's funny the way that the gay lobby talks about homophobia. I've had stories of gay friends of mine coming to me and explaining that other gay people have called them homophobic because they would ideally prefer to raise children with a mother or a father. How utterly ridiculous. <laughs> was I homophobic when I was looking in the mirror, wondering where my father was? Was I homophobic when I looked at both of my loving parents and pleaded with them to tell me who I was? Absolutely not. But I do love all three of my parents equally. Homophobia in itself is really just an aversion to behaviour. It has been, it was there for a reason. We have evolved past that point as a society. But I really, really deeply disagree with equating homophobia to racism. A person of colour walks into a room and everybody knows what race they are. Everybody knows they're different. Anybody can walk into a room and nobody has any idea what sexuality they are because sexuality in itself is fluid. Sexuality is not a reliable form of identity because it changes. It changes due to circumstance or even personal choice. It is not equivalent of racism. And I'm offended by the idea that I am equal to a racist for speaking out about this very topic. Why is our government trying to push an agenda that isn't based on honesty? Because in reality, in any same-sex situation, it takes a third party to produce a child. Always has a third party. So why, as a society, would we try and ignore that as a reality to the situation? I didn't get here based on two women. Three people made the choice to bring, this, to bring me into this world. So why on earth would we try and ignore that? Science is being replaced by adult desire, the way I see it. We see in Canada, people on birth certificates are now legal parents, not biological parents. The birth certificate is changing from a document of history for a child into a document of intent. This is adults saying, I am the one who's going to take care of this child. But what information does that give to the child? It's not realistic. Nobody makes a birth certificate for intent. It's for information. It's for heritage. My mother pitched a question to me the other week. She said to me, Millie, what if my partner and I were able to be married? What if we had that stable household environment that everybody else has? And I answered the question very simply. It was basically, 
were answered with another question, which would have been how would psychologists have treated me for my underlying issues of fatherlessness if to acknowledge fatherlessness was a form of discrimination? How would any physician under threat of legal action have treated me under that circumstance? It was met with silence. Nobody thinks about this before we rush ahead to marriage. And I think it's really funny that Obama has stood up and said it's time for everyone else to evolve. But last time I checked, evolution took a fair few steps. It took a little longer than a decade <laughs> to eventuate. And it also, it took everybody with it. Evolution was not made by one political agenda. That is silencing even the other half of the LGBT. This is an extremist minority that are pushing, from my opinion, what seems to be extinction of gender in itself. <laughs> I don't see gender equality. I see a pitch to get rid of gender altogether. <laughs> Until we as a society have a discussion that includes children like me who are not okay with parents deciding which parts are acceptable to reveal, until this discussion includes everybody who has been raised fatherless or motherless, until this discussion stops shaming children in my position for coming forward, we should not be pushing marriage through because evolution takes steps and I am not going to stand here and be silenced by people telling me what was acceptable for me to feel, that I'm a bad person for wanting a father, that maybe I didn't love my mothers enough because I wanted a father. It's full and I won't support it. I thank you for coming here tonight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. much for the standing ovation but I just want to say that it's really great to see everybody here in support of the same cause because everybody deserves a voice and I won't stand here and let people shame Christians or anybody of faith just based on faith for standing up for children because it's ridiculous. <laughs>